You might not matter to you that only 7% of all snakes in the world actually has a venom that is harmful to man and you just want it out of the house. Well in this video you're going to learn exactly what to do if you see a snake in the house or any other place for that matter. Make sure you watch the end of this video because I've got a bonus tip for you on how to tell whether or not a snake is actually dangerous or not. It's really important to understand why a snake would be in your house in the first place. Now you might be thinking, but why Grant? Why not just tell me how to get rid of the thing? Well, of course I can, but not if you want to try and avoid this kind of situation. Now the reason for me showing this is to highlight how panic and fear can be the enemy of rational action. This situation could have gone wrong in so many unnecessary ways. The woman could have fallen off the book, she could have fallen on the table, she could have fallen onto the snake as it was coming past. Now the only way to combat this fear and panic is with the proper knowledge. So why do people end up in this panic state? Well, it's because we think that the snake is actually there to hurt us. Now this is very important because this is what leads to snake bite. We are scared because we think the snake wants to bite us. We think it is there to find us and to hurt us. But the truth is that a snake is not nearly as powerful as a human. In any fight, one on one with a snake, the snake is going to come off second best. Even if a venomous snake does bite you, the venom doesn't act instantly and it gives you time to actually retaliate against the snake. To the snake, being trapped in your house is a very dangerous situation. The snake is completely vulnerable, it cannot find its way out and it's under a huge threat. In fact, the reasons why snakes hood or spit or puff or rattle their tails or even play dead is to avoid conflict, it's to avoid a situation where they get into a fight with a much bigger predator than themselves. These are in fact defensive actions and very easily understood distress signals which we mistake as aggression. The point is when we can see the snake as it truly is, lost, scared, hungry, even cold, then it's far easier for us to act in a more compassionate and respectful way. And then honestly, everything becomes much easier. Okay, let's get into the practical things that you can do if you see a snake in your house. Now the first and one of the most important things to remember is to leave it alone. Remember what we said about the snake being scared? Well, the most important thing that you can do is to not push it to act defensively. If you leave the snake alone, allow it to feel safe in that situation, it's not going to act in a defensive way. But keep an eye on it. If there's one thing that snakes are good at, that is hiding. So while you want to leave it alone, you also don't want to lose sight of it if possible. Now, the second thing that you want to consider is those around you. Do you have pets in the house? Dog investigating the snake is a sure way for that animal to act defensively against your pets. So move your pets away, lock them in a room if you can. But of course, again, you want to try and keep an eye on the snake because if it disappears into the couch or behind a fridge or somewhere, then it's very difficult to find. So if possible, get somebody else to keep an eye on the snake or to help you remove the dogs. If you have small kids in the house, then no need to panic, rather let the kids know there's a snake in the house, it's feeling really scared, let's give it its space and let's watch it from a safe distance. The next thing that you can do, and this is really helpful, it's not essential, and that is to take a picture of the snake. If you can get a good shot of the snake, even if there isn't help close by, then you can take that photograph, you can WhatsApp a snake expert, and at least you can find out what is the snake. Again, remember, the chances are that snake is non-venomous and in that case, if there's nobody that can help you, you could take a broom or something and sweep it outside, for example. But in any case, you can tell what your next course of action is, your next safe course of action is, if you can first identify what that snake is. The way that you take the picture of the snake is to give yourself two to three meters space. Even if it's a spitting cobra, for example, if you've got three meters from you, you can still take a picture of that snake safely and then forward that to a snake expert. If you don't have a snake expert or somebody that you can contact, you can go to my website, capesnakeconservation.com, and there you can find a link where you can submit your photographs and I can help you identify that snake. And so now the next practical thing that you can do is actually to physically isolate the animal. Now this involves taking a large object like a bucket, for example, and actually physically placing it over the snake. Now obviously this comes with a bit of a warning, common sense needs to be used here. If the snake is large and moving quickly, it's best then to avoid any contact with the animal. 
If you had to misplace the bucket over the side of the snake, for example, and actually hurt it, then it's going to start acting defensively. This really only applies to snakes that maybe are hardly moving, maybe the snake is even dead, maybe it's a small snake or even a baby snake, and then in that case, it can actually be very easy just to place a bucket or something over the snake. Of course, if you do that, keep your fingers at the back out of the way so that you're out of its strike range and make sure that you keep your legs out of the way as well. Place the bucket over the snake, put something on top of it, and that way the snake cannot get away. You still want to keep an eye on it. You don't want to leave this now. You want to keep your pets away. You don't want anybody knocking it over. But this is just a way to ensure that the snake doesn't somehow escape into a cupboard, into a couch, or somewhere in the house that you're not able to find it again. The other thing that you can do is if the snake is in a room, like in a bathroom, for example, or even a bedroom, perhaps you've lost sight of it, maybe it's behind a bookshelf, then you can close that door, isolate the snake, make sure the windows are closed, then importantly, put something at the base of the door, like a towel or a doorstop or something. This can ensure that the snake can't climb out from underneath there. You'll be very surprised at the gaps that snakes can get through, so don't underestimate this, even if you think it's too large to fit under the bottom. Just place something there for safety's sake, that way the snake is now isolated in the room, and when the snake handler gets there, he only has one place to start hunting, and it will be easier to find it in the end. The most important thing again is just keep an eye on it until help arrives. Now you have the snake in your house, you have it isolated, you have it under a bucket, you have it in the corner, you're keeping an eye on it, you're Kids are standing over there, the dogs are away, it's a little bit panicky, a little bit afraid. That's normal, that's okay. The next very important thing to do is to get the snake identified. In many cases, when we go out to catch snakes, the snakes end up being something completely non-venomous and we end up just releasing it back in the garden again if the person is comfortable with us doing that. So a very useful thing first is to send that photograph through to the snake handler, to get the snake identified. If the snake is non-venomous, then you might even be able to scoop it into a bucket yourself and release it in a field nearby. You could sweep it out with a broom into the garden or at least give the snake handler a heads up as to what he or she is going to be dealing with when they get there. If the snake is venomous, then of course it's advisable that the snake actually gets caught and relocated a little bit of a distance away from the house so it's away from your family and your pets and anybody in your living area. The best course of action here is to get a professional snake handler to help you out. If that is not possible, if there isn't a professional snake handler in your area, then I would advise you to contact a snake handler, go through the case on a case by case basis. There is no, this is what you should do in every situation. Every situation is different. So rather speak to a professional at least, send them the picture, send them as much information as possible. You could potentially even do a video call with them and they can talk you through the steps of what to do in that situation so that you can safely deal with the situation at hand. Once again, just remember, all that snake wants is to remain safe. That snake wants to get out of the situation alive. Its life is a danger here. So treat it with respect, treat it with compassion. The snake is scared and it fears for its own life and the situation will be dealt with safely. Okay, Grant, so you're thinking, well, that's all good and well, but I don't have a snake in my house. I've got a snake in my garden. Well. Whether the snake is in your garden, whether it's in the office, whether it's in your swimming pool, all of these things apply. Leave the snake alone. Get others to safety. Take a picture if you can. Contact a professional for help. But of course, there might be some situations where it's actually best to leave the snake if it's in its natural environment, for example. So let's say that you're out hiking on a hiking trail and you see a snake in the path. Then what do you do? Again, leave the snake alone. Let others in the party know where it is and then either give it a nice wide berth, three meters should be fine, walk around the snake slowly, keep an eye on it, watch it, admire it, enjoy the sighting and keep going. Of course, if it's a busy path and there are other people walking around there, then it might be good to get a long stick or some other type of object and just gently coax the snake off the path and it'll flee off into the undergrowth. What do you do if you see a dead snake, you ask? Well, this catches a lot of people out and you've got to be very careful with this. Some snakes can play dead and it might just be a defensive strategy that's using. You don't want to pick it up then because now that last ditch effort to stay away from you hasn't worked. It's only left with one choice and that is to strike in order to defend itself. In other cases, the snake might be dead, but just like a chicken running around without its head, those nerves can still be in action 
and it could still bite you even long after the snake has actually been dead. There are videos of this on YouTube, you can search them. People chopping off the heads of a copperhead or something. A little bit brutal to see, but very interesting. Respect snakes, even if they're dead. Those venom glands can still be active. And even just a little cut on your finger from one of the fang, a drop of venom would be enough to envenomate you and cause serious problems. So even if the snake is dead, if you don't know what it is, don't interfere with it, leave it alone. Take a photograph, send the picture to a snake expert, contact me on my website and I can help you identify it, but leave it alone. Can't stress this enough. Okay, so now we have reached the end of the steps that you can take if you see a snake in your house or anywhere else for that matter. And now we're gonna get onto the bonus tip I promised you, and that is how to tell if a snake is dangerous or not. Now this is quite controversial because many people in the snake world like to proliferate this fear of snakes that they, they like to talk about how dangerous they are because in some way it makes the snake catcher or the snake handler more of a hero. The more dangerous the snake is, the more brave the snake catcher is. But to be honest, we don't believe that that is the case at all. We believe that humans are far more dangerous than snakes and that the situation can be dangerous, but the snake itself is not dangerous if it's not put in a situation where it needs to defend itself for its own life. In order to illustrate that, we came up with this infographic. All of these pictures are of a Cape Cobra, which is thought to be one of the most dangerous snakes in South Africa. This applies to any snake that you can find. So, how do you tell if a snake is dangerous? Well, the first thing you can look at, and we've discussed this a lot already through this video, and that is, are you leaving it alone? If the answer to that is yes, well, then the snake cannot be dangerous. If there's a snake 10 meters from you, that snake is not dangerous. The situation is not dangerous. Are you leaving it alone? Well, if the answer is yes, well then that situation is not dangerous. The snake is not dangerous. The next question to ask is, does the snake have a chance to escape? So for example, you are coaxing it with a stick, you are prodding it. If that snake has a very easy escape route, well then that isn't dangerous because the snake has a way to escape. And I've many videos that I've made to show that, that this is exactly what snakes will do first. I will link one up here, and this is a video that I did to prove that snakes do not chase people. Now, of course, the next question is, are you trying to harm the snake, kill it, grab it, or harass it in any way? Well, again, if the answer is no, then the snake remains not dangerous. Even a cobra, if it's hooding up or if a rattlesnake rattling his tail, that snake is just giving you a warning. It is not dangerous in that situation. In that situation, the snake is trying to do what it can to get you, which is a threat, you are the predator, we are the biggest predators on this planet, is trying to get you to move away. If you do that, then there's no danger to the snake or to yourself. And that brings us to the final thing. If we answered yes to this, you are trying to harm it, you're trying to grab it, you're trying to pick it up, even if it's dead, well, then this potentially becomes a very dangerous situation. But in the end, it's not the snake that is dangerous because the snake knows no difference. The snake thinks that you're gonna try and eat it or kill it. So it's in fact your actions that are dangerous. The reason why I think this is such an important distinction to make is because it puts the responsibility on people. The way we act around the snakes is directly gonna influence the way that the snakes respond to us. This is why we as snake handlers can go around catching snakes, relocating them, and not having any problems because the snake just wants to be treated properly and it just wants to, as we've discussed so many times already in this video, it just wants to look after its own life. Fun fact is that out of a few hundred puff adders that I've ever caught, I've only ever seen one puff adder strike. That puff adder happened to be a juvenile, a baby puff adder that was crossing a road and when I ran up to it to try and take a photograph from about three meters away, the snake started to strike violently in, in space, nowhere near me, completely out of protection for itself. That was the only puffer that I've ever seen strike. I've seen them hiss, I've seen them get into strike pose, I've seen them make a lot of noise. Quite intimidating to be honest, especially when the puffer is really hissing, but very, very rarely do they actually strike. If you see videos where people are getting puff adders to strike, that's because they've pushed them to that limit where they are now in a position where they feel they have no other option but to try and protect themselves. Of course, puff adders and any other snakes do strike. We have to give them that respect. We have to be aware of that. But in 99% of the cases, the snake is not gonna strike. The snake is gonna take 
the safest option available to it, and that is to flee for its life. The point is that a snake's best defense is to flee. That is its number one option. Leave a snake alone, give it the chance to flee, and everything will be fine. So if you made it this far, I just want to say, well done. You are way more equipped now to deal with a snake. In the end, the most important thing is to stay calm and to realize that the snake is not there to hurt you. It's not there to hurt anyone else. It just wants to look after its own safety. So the best things to do are leave it alone, move others to safety, take a photograph if possible, contact a local snake handler or contact us on our website, get the snake identified, get the snake relocated if it's something venomous or if you really can't stand it if you're really afraid of snakes you don't want even a non-venomous snake in your garden get that relocated too if you've enjoyed this video at all please give it a like and if you haven't subscribed do so i'm going to be making a lot more videos like this in the future and good luck with any snake encounters that you do have if you do have a fear for them i hope that you don't have too many but if you do i hope that in some way this video will help you to get some perspective and not be so afraid the next time so that you can handle the situation in the safest way possible.